noticed more in high school, it wasn't because I didn't look the part, it was because I didn't act the part. And if you talk about it out loud, no one really takes it seriously. It's something that I think deeply affected my growth and my change into teenagehood and adulthood. Bullying is a topic that we hear a lot about lately, though the concept of bullying is far from new. Many of us have probably experienced a form of bullying at one time in our life or another. Maybe you were bullied firsthand, or maybe someone you know or love has been the target of bullying. The increased awareness and prevention initiatives towards bullying over the past few years are a step in the right direction. But with the major changes in our ways of communication throughout the past few decades, much more needs to be done. Through media and social networking, we have been exposed to the negative impact that bullying can have, especially on youth. They are constantly connected to each other through phones and social media in a way that doesn't allow them to ever disconnect. This constant connection brings bullying to a new and dangerous level, from embarrassment to actual physical harm, or the bullied individual getting to the point that they may feel the only way out is suicide. Um, my boyfriend's already been heavily bullied for not only being mentally ill, but also attempting suicide. So. I've heard countless stories of teens who attempt suicide due to persecution of mental illness. And then it makes me think, oh my gosh, what am I doing wrong? And then I'm like, and then I almost bully myself. I think that's what happens with me a lot in my case, where I'm like, it's those automatic negative thoughts. Some who are bullied may also have a mental illness. Unfortunately, there tends to be an unjust stigma attached to mental health. So, on top of their social, emotional, or behavioral difficulties, they may also deal with being bullied. The reality that we cannot ignore is that bullying youth with mental illness happens, and the impact of this can be deadly. Bullying is real, and we must address and find ways to help those in need. Words can invoke feelings, words can solicit emotions, words can heal, and words can hurt. When we hear that someone is ill or sick, people tend to feel sympathy for them. When we think of someone who is sick with cancer or a heart condition and hear they're getting help for their illness, we don't think less of them and we don't think that they are weak. We don't tell them to toughen up or pull yourself together. We don't criticize or put the blame on them. We don't judge them for their illness and we feel glad that there is help and hope for them. Why is it that when we hear about people with mental or behavioral health challenges that our words aren't as kind? Why do we use words that blame and shame in the conversation? Why is seeking help for a mental illness something that people are made to feel bad about? Why do we suggest toughen up or pull yourselves together? The stigma attached to mental health is long-standing, and though we have come a long way in advancing awareness of mental health, until we can change our dialogue and the words we use to be hopeful and encouraging the same way they are for the people who have other types of illnesses, we have not even come close to erasing the stigma. Mental health and physical health are equal and intertwined. Change your words, change the conversation, and help end stigma once and for all. It puts a target on your back. It makes you seem vulnerable and easy to mess with. It just gives them a reason, like, oh, you're just not like us. Like, we, we don't take it seriously, especially nowadays. It's just kind of like, you can throw, you know, I want to kill myself out there, and it's like, ah, it's funny, it's relatable, or whatever. Trauma is an emotional response that can come from witnessing or being in events such as a terrible accident, natural catastrophe occurrences, abuse, and bullying. We are probably familiar with the situations portrayed in movies, or on TV where someone is bullied for being different or unpopular. However, most people don't know what it's like to be bullied for having ADHD or depression. It is important because many teens face this challenge every day. The effects that result from bullying can't be ignored. Victims of bullying may start to experience symptoms of trauma, trouble sleeping, eating, or concentrating, have nightmares or flashbacks, and feel anxious or fearful. They may even become irritable and aggressive. The traumatic effects may be greater for someone who has a mental health disability. Uh, just worsens the cause. Bullying somebody who already has bad thoughts and bad self-esteem is a literal risk to their health, so 
bullying in general just isn't okay. It can have a bigger impact or a different impact on people that have mental illness. It can become worse due to the pressure put on them by bullies. To erase stigma, talk openly about mental health while educating yourself and others. Be conscious of the language you use. Show compassion for those who have a mental illness and choose empowerment over shame. End bullying by standing up and speaking out to kids, teachers, and parents. Change the conversation about bullying by bringing awareness to the trauma it causes. Get involved today. I like speaking out. I like talking. That's just part of my personality. And if I can be a part of something that gets the word out, I will. It's kind of important that it's more out there and taken seriously and it's not just something people can, you know, laugh about. You're not alone and there's such a community out there, people ready to help you. Nevada System of Care is an organizational framework for Nevada behavioral health providers to ensure that support services are family driven and youth guided, which are valuable components in treatment planning. These services are provided in accordance with the national standards for culturally and linguistically appropriate services in healthcare. Nevada PET believes that children, youth, young adults, and their families deserve the opportunity to live, learn, and participate fully in their communities. If you know of a child with a disability who has been bullied, contact Nevada PET for information and support at toll free 800-216 5188. Visit nvpep.org and can follow PEP on social media at Nevada PEP. Youth Move Nevada offers youth and adolescents the opportunity to get involved and help guide Nevada support services for youth. Through their shared experiences, youth unite to bridge the gap on systems change and remove the stigma placed on mental health. To get involved, call 800-216-5188 and follow Youth Move Nevada on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram at YouthMoveNV.